Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. All right, everybody. I'm back. Good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, so... Want to go ahead and talk a little bit of College Hoops Transfer Portal news and notes. It's about 5 p.m. Eastern time and a couple notes before we get started. One, this stuff changes constantly, okay? So if you hear a name, you see this, you see that, and, and stuff has changed, don't be mad at me. This stuff moves really quick. But a lot of College Hoops Transfer Portal news to get to, and I'll say this, is that uh, I've been covering this for years, and it felt like this past Monday, just this past Monday, was as busy of a day in the portal as I can remember. Players committing, players entering, players setting up visits. It was insanity. And I want to go ahead and recap it all. As a quick reminder, as you can see on the scroller, CBB transfers on both Twitter and Instagram run by me and my team. Um, that keeps you updated on everything. We just started the Instagram account. You want to be, you want to say something cool at your next party or get together? You can be one of the first 100 people to be subscribed to that page, CBB Transfers on Twitter and Instagram. The Instagram page just got started. Also, we did a couple standalone videos. Umar Balo committing to Indiana, uh, Big Z committing to Arkansas, and also on top of that, DJ Wagner entering the portal. So we, we'll kind of gloss over them because I do feel like we kind of went in depth on all three of those guys. But with that said, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to the big. News and notes of Monday into Tuesday. First big note, Kentucky, you have yourself the first player of the John Calipari era. That is because Tuesday morning we found out that Colin Chandler, a high four-star, fringe five-star from the class of 2022, had been committed to BYU. He flips and ends up at Kentucky. And I know what, if you're just if you're not a Kentucky fan, you sat there and say, wait, 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 wait a second, Torres. You said class of 2022. You meant 2024, right? No, no, no. Colin Chandler is a member of the class of 2022, committed to BYU, and has been on a two-year Mormon mission since he graduated high school. So he has not yet played college basketball, but he becomes the first commit of Kentucky. Now, what stands out to me about him, so I forgot this actually, but I have seen him play basketball. So it was funny, Jack Pilgrim, Kentucky Sports Radio, on Tuesday when this kid committed, tweeted out, oh, the 2021 Pangos All-American camp, uh, he was a baller, he did this, he did that. I sat there, I was like, wait a second now. I was at 2021 Pangos, 2021 Pangos All-American camp with Jack Pilgrim. And I remember sitting there watching Colin, not necessarily with Jack, but I remember sitting there watching this kid and I was like, oh, who is that? Really good player, six foot four guard, super athletic. I remember taking notes at the time being like, I think this dude's a potential NBA-type athlete. Good hops, good athleticism, unafraid, attacked the rim. And at a place, you know, that was a camp that had um, Jalen Duran, Derek Lively. I can't remember everybody that was there that year, but that kid belonged, and he was, I felt like, played as well as anybody that weekend. Now, the positive is he's a really good player. The negative is it's worth noting he has been on a two-year Mormon mission. And what I can tell you, I'm far from an expert, certainly – by no means, and I hope it doesn't come off this way, not criticizing or judging any type of religion. But what I can tell you is I know for a fact that that this is not uh, the type of thing where you go away for a few years, you do church stuff for an hour or two every day, and then you're you're out with a trainer at nighttime. I remember a few years ago talking to Sam Merrill, who played at Utah State. He's now actually in the NBA with the Cleveland Cavaliers. I remember talking to Sam Merrill about this a few years ago, and he said, if I remember correctly, I believe he said something to the effect of like, we got one hour of leisure activity a week while I was on my Mormon mission. Okay. It was all church all the time. And like Sunday you get an hour. And I remember him saying like, you just want to, uh, you know, I just tried to do any sprints that I could. Rarely did I have a basketball. Rarely did I have a, uh, a court to shoot on. I mean, even if we're talking once a day, I mean, we, we're talking about some unique areas of the world. Again, not here to criticize everybody. And I guess the point that I'm trying to make is as good as this kid was at the time, I do think it is going to take him time to get back comfortable playing big time college basketball. So my guess is it's going to be a slow process, even with a great strength and conditioning program at Kentucky, it's going to take time. 
but this is a really talented player. I would expect him to emerge and kind of come on towards the end of this coming season. And really, this is what you want at Kentucky fans, high-end players uh, that might spend a year or two uh, on campus. And I, I don't think this kid is a one-and-done type prospect. Let's go ahead and keep it going. Uh, let's go ahead and keep it going uh, and talk about some of the other commitments over the course of the last couple days, last couple hours, whatever. Uh, one that stands out to me, we went from a current Kentucky Wildcat to a former Kentucky Wildcat. Aaron Bradshaw committing to Ohio State was stunning to me. Average five points, three and a half boards per game. Interesting story. He was a McDonald's All-American, was a top five prospect, uh, ends up uh, uh, you know, going to Kentucky. He spends last spring, he's injured, he doesn't practice, he doesn't participate, really kind of ramps up towards the back half of the, the you know, really the back half of, of training camp. And, and, you know, I think he really got going really October, November. So he missed most of December. He comes back in December, but just never really found a groove. Not totally his fault. I'm not here to crush John Calipari, but listen, the rotations were kind of wonky all year. As guys got healthy, Cal never really figured out how to get all the pieces together, all going in the same direction. Then Big Z comes back. Then Aaron Bradshaw sits down. You know, it's like there was just never any consistency. So I think a second year of college basketball, first of all, I give him credit, um, you know, not rushing the process. He's coming back to college basketball, which is fascinating in his own right, considering that he was projected as a one-and-done type prospect. But the thing you got to remember, not everybody is a one-and-done. Not everybody is a finished product, and I'm excited to see him in year two. The upside is there. The talent is there. Now, the thing with Ohio State, I just we don't know a ton about the roster that is going to surround him. Um, you know, they obviously added Michi Johnson from South Carolina earlier this offseason, uh, and you expect a couple of the big key pieces from last year's team to be back. But Aaron Bradshaw at the same time isn't the kind of guy that can kind of just enter a program, take things over, uh, and be a star. So I will be fascinated to see how it all plays out. Aaron Bradshaw, a very interesting commitment to Ohio State. I do think, you know, kind of getting out of that spotlight at Kentucky might be best, be able to develop at his own pace. I still believe he has NBA talent and upside, and now it's time for him to prove it. A couple other commitments worth noting. Louisville with another marquee commitment over the course of the last couple hours. Javon Hadley from Colorado. Interesting piece. 11 points, six boards, 41% shooting from three, just completed his fourth year at Colorado, decided to enter the portal, one more season of major college basketball, and he commits to Louisville. Second notable commit for Louisville, at least as we're recording, as he joins Terrence Edwards Jr. from James Madison. And what I can tell you, I think we're starting to get a feel for the type of roster that Pat Kelsey wants to put together. Both guys who've committed are kind of in the six foot six, six foot seven range. They can both shoot. And it strikes me that Pat Kelsey is trying to put together a versatile, switchable team. Remember, Charleston this year uh, scored a lot, shot a lot of threes. And I would guess, you know, he's probably going to bring the same kind of mindset and mantra to Louisville. Averaged 80 points, 35% shooting from the three point line as a team at Charleston. Overall, on the season, they attempted almost 400 three-point attempts. So Javon Hadley fits very nicely in with what Pat Kelsey did at Charleston, what I expect him to do at Louisville. Also worth noting, by the way, uh, on top of that, Eric Daly, six foot eight wing, uh, played the last year at Oklahoma State. He committed to UCLA on Tuesday. Very interesting commitment from this perspective. UCLA, four years. It was a complaint. Of the staff there, not not Mick Cronin or whatever, but it's been a thing at UCLA. It's been hard for them to get transfers into that program. They've already gotten three. Kobe Johnson from USC, Sky Clark from Louisville have already committed. Eric Daly's another one. Eric Daly, like Kobe Johnson in that six foot six, six foot seven, six foot eight range. One thing about uh, uh, UCLA this past year, I don't think they had the athleticism to kind of defend the way that Mick Cronin wanted to defend. Ah, uh, yeah, that ain't going to be an issue going forward. Really quickly, a couple big names that have entered the portal. As I said, we have talked about DJ Wagner. We did a separate standalone video on DJ Wagner. If you missed that, make sure to go back and check it out. Um, by the way, we did commitment videos on Umar Balo as well as um, as well as Big Z. So make sure to check those out as well. 
couple players who have entered the portal. This is a big name to know. Kobe Brea, six foot six wing, played the last four years at Dayton, has a COVID year, entered the transfer portal on uh entered the transfer portal on on Monday afternoon. Why is that important? How about this? Kobe Brea was quite literally, not figurative. A lot of people use literally when they're talking figuratively. In this case, I'm not. He was literally the leading three-point shooter in college basketball, took over 200 three-pointers, made 49% of his three-point shots. Six foot six, originally from New York. I know St. John's was involved early, but everybody, well, I don't want to say early, but but you know, I, one of my St. John's people said that they expected him them to be involved. I bring it up to say, Everybody's involved at this point. Uh, he put out a list. I think it was Jamie Shaw was the one that 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 tweeted it out. I could be mistaken, but UConn, Kansas, UCLA, a few other schools have all been in the mix and all have reached out to Kobe Brea. Um, saw some reports that potentially it could be a UConn versus Kansas thing, and I think that'd be an interesting showdown. You know, Kansas has has really upgraded the guard positions this off season. Riley Kugel. And also, um, why am I blanking out the kid's name? Zeke Mayo from South Dakota State. They get this kid. He's a difference maker. But I would also say UConn, listen, if UConn wants you, it's going to be really hard to turn down the UConn Huskies this offseason, coming off back-to-back -back national championships, putting guys in the pros. And the one thing we've talked about it, UConn needs for, uh, backcourt guys. They're losing Tristan Newton. They're losing Cam Spencer. They're losing Steph Castle almost certainly. So six foot six that shoots threes. That sounds like a UConn guy. I will be curious to see if anybody else can get involved. Kobe Brea, a name to know there. A couple other names. Thought it was interesting. On Sunday, we talked a little bit about the Texas Longhorns. They added uh, the former, uh, the former Arkansas Razorback Tremont Mark. Well, I bring it up because the portal giveth, the portal, portal taketh away. On Monday, they lose two marquee players as Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell both enter the portal. For people who do not remember the names, Dylan Mitchell, or, or excuse me, let's start with Tyrese Hunter. Very interesting player. So he was a guy, started his career at Iowa State, had the ball in his hands. Iowa State makes the Sweet 16. He decides to enter the portal and go to Texas. It was quite controversial at the time. Averages 11 and a half points per game this past year. He spent two years at Texas. But ultimately, didn't really get that much better. Averaged 11 per game at Iowa State with five assists per game. This year, averaged 11 points per game with four assists per game. And so he has one more year of eligibility. I think he is entering the portal looking for a spot where he can kind of get back to being who he was. Never loved the fit alongside Max Acemas this year at Texas. And so I just bring it up because he is a really talented guard. I think he has to get back to who he was. He's got to get better. The big thing is he's kind of the same player he was when he got to Texas from Iowa State. Don't know this, so it's just speculation. Don't think Iowa State would be involved. I think they're happy with their backcourt, but Tyrese Hunter is in the portal. Dylan Mitchell, by the way, former McDonald's All-American, also in the portal. Dylan Mitchell, interesting prospect. Uh, played the last two years at Texas, 9.5 points per game, 7.5 rebounds per game. Really ath crazy athletic kid. The issue is he can't shoot. Literally made zero three pointers on four attempts this year. He's six foot eight. He's got every other tool in his bag, uh, as the kids say. Can't hit these though. If you can't hit threes, you can't play in the NBA. So I think that's going to be a big point of 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 contention with his next school. Who's going to help me develop for the next level? Because he's got to be able to shoot threes. Dylan Mitchell, Tyrese uh, Hunter, both uh, Ty Ty Tyrese Hunter and Dylan Mitchell, both from Texas, both in the portal. Over the last couple of days, couple visits of note, Aiden Holloway. Did you see this former McDonald's all American played this last year at Auburn? You know where he's taking his first visit? Oh, baby. He is headed to, how about this played last year at Auburn? He is going to Alabama six foot one guard. Listen, the shooting percentages were not great. If the shooting percentages were great, he'd probably be going to the NBA after one year. So he's got work to do from shooting beyond the three point arc, but I just bring it up because the talent is there for Aiden Holloway. And now it's about for him going ahead and kind of putting all the pieces together. I think the big thing at Auburn, realistically, if we're being honest, you know, just not a system that highlights individual players. You go there, they play 10, 11 guys. It's about depth. It's about strength and numbers. 
I think he's looking for a bigger role. My assumption is if he goes to Alabama, he'd be the lead guard there. My assumption would also be that Mark Sears probably isn't coming back for another year, but Aiden Holloway is in the portal. He is making visits. Oh, by the way, a couple other visits of note. Trey Townsend, I thought this was interesting. If you remember the name, he, of course, was the uh, he was the player of the year in the horizon playing for Oakland. Oakland, the team that beat Kentucky in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. He is in the portal. Three visits set up. Louisville, Arizona, Ohio State. As I said, he kind of fits that vibe of what Louisville is looking for. Of course, they, um, you know, as I said a minute ago, looking for 6'6". They're looking for athleticism. Trey Townsend's another name to know. Tell you what, I'm going to get out of here. I gave you 15 minutes of content. We'll probably do another one of these tomorrow because the portal is going crazy. Make sure you're following CBB Transfers on Twitter, CBB Transfers on Instagram. It could be one of the first 100 followers there. You can take that with you to the grave. Also, you go to AaronTorresOnline.com. That's where I have all of my portal rankings.